with it. Indeed, we are jumping into game number one here. It is the French against the Ottomans. 3DB seed number one against seed 16. That is Salami spawning it on the left side. It will be Salami playing as the Ottomans in blue. And on the other side, in the color orange, it's going to be B with the French. So usually when I watch B against other civilizations, he'll move out with five vils for that deer pack exactly when he spots it. And it looks like he says, I don't care if you are Ottomans and you're going to bring some spears up. I'm still going to do it anyways. And this really allows the French player to get, first off, an early age up timing. It doesn't really delay you any as you get survival techniques and you get this great, great food gathering and more efficient gathering. And... It allows you to have your safer food for later on with you able to, you know, grab up these sheep and, and really be aggressive with your scouting as well after. Salami opting to go with the military school right from the get-go. He is going to have the first spearman queued up in there. And this is what you would anticipate Salami do. Just try to hit that gold mine as early as possible. He might find some collateral damage over here if he can harass these hunters as well. Yeah, the thing is, is one Spearman will not be enough to uh, to do some damage on this location. Looks like B circling around that deer to push it in, make it even more efficient. That first Spear, I remember I was saying it uh, in, the, in the load screen, it's about three minutes is when it'll end up arriving over there. It takes a good bit of time before it ends up being able to run all the way across, especially with these uh, little wall spawns that we see here. Yeah, the cliff spots definitely make life a little bit more difficult for Salami. He's going to have to walk all around them, which will take some time and will probably slow down his advance towards B's base. B also getting close to the 200 gold mark, so he's going to have enough to get up to Feudal Age with by the time the first Spearman arrives. Yeah, Salami hasn't even scouted out that deer location and be able to get that extra food resource like we were saying uh and for the long run at least for the time being one spear easily going to be able to get circled by those bills as i've seen 3db do it so many times if you just missed up by just one slight misclick and there's that spear circling around those cliff spawns like we were mentioning taking quite a bit of time scouts still circling around and the big question oh my gosh that is a forward school of calvary yeah, first, first spearman now spear. coming in here as you said concern here for salami is that the villagers will be enough to push this away if we were talking let's say mongol spears here talk about two three four with a double training this would be a completely different story for B, but with only one Spearman here for Salami, all he can do is just a bit of a harassment, some idle time on the villagers, but that's the best thing that he can accomplish here. And look at how much damage comes in from those five villagers pulling out their shiv. All of a sudden, that spear is down to, you know, less than a quarter health. The Sultani trade network is the choice by Salami, and spear coming right back in, and... Gets taken down, so first spear absolutely worthless, essentially, other than a little bit of idle time and one vil getting down to half health. Second vil about to be here, but that school of cavalry getting pretty close, and Salam, or I mean, uh, 3db even getting wheelbarrow in behind this because no denial has come through on his gold yet. Yeah, we talked about this at the beginning of the series in the pregame show that. If Salami wants to win against an opponent like B, who is highly favored in this series, he needs to pull out some unconventional strategies, some weird openings and such. He's going to play around the Sotahani trade network. I would not be surprised to see him try and trade here. It feels suicidal against French knights, but if you're Salami, you have to play for the high upsides. If you play standard over here, I think B's individual skill will just overwhelm you. Yeah, you can see he's just poke prodding this little bit of deer, which is delaying all of the food income for B. So Knight not yet in queue. So this has had a good effect on Salami's early game. And, uh, you know, even though he hasn't killed any villagers, it's caused a lot of idle time. And first Knight just now being queued up. Oof. Spear getting to one shot, but another spear arriving. Stragglers being grabbed and traders are being queued up. Let's see if that trade is going to get going soon. And the second spear actually might 
cause this a uh, little bit of pressure, but immediate circle yet again. And this time the knight arrives and both spears will go down from the knight and a fine trade for 3DB, who is feeling pretty happy on the French this early. Yeah, this is as good as it gets for him. He's going to have a lot of sheep secured as well as a backup. He's on the hunt right now, but he's going to have a fallback option. He's going to start moving out to the knights. And for Salami, all he has to deal with this is just a single spearman right now. Yeah, and getting double eco upgrades for 3DB so you can see how comfortable he actually is. Food and gold upgrades. And you know what that's going to mean? More knights. <laughs> exactly. Salami tried his best to harass that gold and the food as well, by the way, as B even yoinks the sheep from the back of that scout. But harassment was insufficient there, partly because you had so many villagers on the hunt. That was a very clever move by B. He pulled the villagers to the hunt, so it never really was the gold miners that got harassed. It was the villagers on food. Plus, of course, he had way more villagers to work with, making sure that the spearmen really cannot get any villager kills there. Yeah, and you can see how many sheep he still has under his town center. Deer are starting to run low, wondering if he's just going to go for that second deer pack as he is the one taking the map control and Salami going to struggle to be the aggressor there with uh, the amount of production he has on his side, only being a military school and only being a barracks next to it. Night circling, looking for a little bit of damage and just, again, f forcing Salami on the back foot. He's making spears and spears to be protection on his gold. That looks like a fast castle build if I've ever seen one. I'm not surprised. He's going to gamble on the fact that the spearmen will be enough to hold off the knights before the knights can really deny the gold mine. Spear actually bracing against the impact over here, stunning the knight. That's some good value there for Salami, pushing away those knights. And indeed, this is going to be a fast castle from Salami. He possibly wants his own lancers as well, wants to establish that map control. And once he has that, he can really start working with those traders that the Sotahani trade network provides. Yeah, two of those knights did get quite low, but the problem is, is how many knights are still going to be arriving as there are two additional ones. B just barely able to dodge out of that charge range. Don't get braced this time. Takes out one more spear, but another knight gets taken down to low health, and these are not good trades for 3DB right now. Indeed, he picked off a villager, but many of his knights are heavily battered. He's just now coming in with chivalry. If Salami can brace over here, he can push away these knights. He does stun the one knight on the front, but number is overwhelming now for B, and this is a good engagement for him. Oh, he does end up losing one knight, does pick up a few more spears again. A lot of those knights are lower health and chivalry finally about to come through as he clears up the rest of those spears. And once the, all of these spears get wiped, what's Salami have to defend with? He's dropping the Imperial Armory. Knights just starting to heal back up, though. Yeah, beautiful micro by B pulling away all of the weak what knights. What a greedy spot. Oh, yeah. And B sees it. It's only two spears. These two knights are full health. B again is just going to trade these knights for these spears and not end up losing anything for it. Pulling back the low health knight and should just circle right back around with these again. I think he should commit the rest of the knights at this point. He might lose a couple, but he could straight up deny this castle age. I think it's he's only just waiting two for the spears. good timing. Oh, and gets a vill already. First vill pick of the game. Gets one more. And there's the rest of them in. There's the full commit. Make sure not to lose any knights and is just delaying up this castleage, waiting for his reinforcing knights that are going to be at full health too. And another vill pick and splits back yet again, keeping his full health knight up front. This is just perfect micro by 3DB showing how you can be efficient with this French. Oh man, that's going to stink. Salami might somehow squeeze out castleage. But the price to pay for that is just going to be massive. Spearman slowing down the knight's approach. A lot of those knights are still heavily battered, but you still have a couple here that are full HP. 
They just keep picking those spears, forcing away the villagers. Not only picking the spears, they're slowly picking up vills over time. He's starting to burn down Castle H. He thinks he can full deny it, and this might just be game right here and there. Salami has to make more spears, has to be able to protect this location, but two spears are not enough with 3DB's economy going untouched. Pulling more vills for this. 3db spots it out going in for yet another charge night circle night circling all the way around wipe out the spears wipe out more vills and i don't think salami's going to be able to hold this i think the forfeit should come through here in the near future and 3db might just full dive eco soon i am so puzzled about this landmark spot you know that b is pushing your gold mine you place the landmark right next to it Maybe he didn't anticipate B to come back with the Knights that soon. Maybe he was waiting for B to heal a little more. But whatever the case, this landmark isn't oh. going up. He's got 15 Knights and four more in queue. You only have a military school and a barracks. You can't catch up to this at all. You're never going to be able to hold this. You just keeps bleeding Vils, keeps bleeding Spearmen. Landmark's finally getting close to finishing, but still not quite there and loses another one. It might finish, but that's going to be the end of the game for Salami. For him, the only thing that's left in this game is just committing to that landmark and saying, okay, I will finish this because there is not much else to fight for in this game. Right when I saw that positioning, I was like, why would he ever do that? And look at the health on the Imperial Armory. It's getting really low. He's about to have to full commit or just lose the game. And there he is pulling Vils, pulling the spears. This is game here and now. It's going to be the beginning of the end. Knight stills able to stay alive. One gets picked off, two gets picked off, but they circle. The Imperial Armory finishes, but it's already burning and more villagers go down with it. Salami, he's at 18 economy. 17 economy. And now B 16. will just burn down the building. <laughs> and uh, exciting first game, quick first game, whatever you want to call it. But 3DB just shows you how micro can still be king if you use French correctly. He has really perfected the micro of those knights out there. He lost just one knight in all those engagements against Spearman. I think he lost a single night in the entire game. That was it. And yeah. when it comes to Salami, his build was well thought over. There was definitely some logic behind this build, and it worked well until he placed that landmark on the front. I really don't know what went through his head there, but in retrospective, that was probably the worst possible spot for that landmark to be placed at. And, and, you know, destroy your po opponent before he kills you. It's easy. It's that easy, right? Yeah, just win, lose. <laughs> <laughs> yep, um, but, but we'll see what Salami has in store here. Last uh, In this matchup last time, we saw HRE go for that 2TC play. English stayed on one and just went all out for military. But is B going to do the same? Is Salami going to do the same? You know, only a few more seconds and we'll get to see for ourselves. Indeed, we're jumping into game number two over here. It is 3DB with the score lead right now, 1-0 ahead of Salami. Oh. We will have the English under the command of B and Salami opted to go with the HRE on the brand new map that's debuting here in the Elite Classic, that is Regions. Here we are in the southwestern side. We have Salami spawning in on that HRE in the blue. And in the northeast, it is 3DB on the English. And as our beautiful observer pointing out, it is the massive gold mines in the middle of the map. That is kind of this mid-map control. It's a, a good incentive to move out to this middle map because there's not only big stone or big golds, there's those big stones on either side as well. So mid-map control is a key here. It's also a very open map that we take a look at. Most of the large forests are at the back of the player's bases. Middle of the map is pretty much just empty playing field. Tiny forests, of course, as you mentioned, a lot of gold, a lot of stone there to work with, though. And who's surprised here? 3DB going out for the deer opening yet again. He is just one for this efficient deer start. He thinks that is just the way to go on a lot of these civilizations. And English getting a little bit of extra wood to start helps them out do this as helps them do this as well. Getting survival techniques right off the bat going to deer. You know, we will have to take a look at 
the other stuff on this map, because we do have some non-standard elements to this map as well. <laughs> the far left has one sacred site and four small patches of hunt right next to it. And the far east will have most of the berries and, of course, the second sacred site. So this is one of those asymmetrical maps where, depending on the strengths and weaknesses of your civilization, you might have to play different regions within the map. Yeah, obviously a lot of Sims would be like, oh, I want to go out to the deer, be super, you know, great food out there. But at the same time, if your opponent is one of the berry-loving civilizations, that's just as strong, if not stronger, on the other side with the amount of food they gain from that many berry patches. Good amount of sheep brought back in for Salami, just doing that typical HR restart onto that, uh, you know, nice food and gold. And now spotting out that deer opening from 3DB as well. Yeah, the deer is on the front for B, so that's definitely a place where Salami could pr try to be aggressive at. But obviously, him playing the HRE, it will take some time until he can really put some pressure there. Earliest time is, as we have seen in the previous set, playing into that man at arm style approach with the marching drills. Then again, B is the English. He can defend very well against that with the network of castles bonus. So it's somewhat doubtful that Salami could do much to deny the deer right now. Yeah, pretty typical spot for this chapel, as expected. Not the typical amount of vills you would expect on it. Eight, getting it down really fast. And as I was leading into, not an expected spot for the council hall. Very far off in the middle of nowhere. It will allow him to like produce some longbows to protect up his you know gold in this hunt. But if he gets denied, if he loses some fights, and he could just lose his production as well with it. For sure, this is one of the drawbacks, I guess, of placing your production buildings, especially landmark-style production buildings, like the Council Hall, at the front of your base. You do this, it helps you reinforce battles in the middle of the field a lot better, but the drawback, or the trade-off, I guess, is that if you lose this position, your units will be instantly picked off as they spawn. Oh, exactly, and Prelate moving out... Not in the chapel, going over towards the stone, it seemed, for Salami and <sighs> Scout getting pretty low. We'll need to be weary of that as some of those Vills could potentially uh, take out those short bows and finish off the Scout. And Salami will be going for that 2TC play just as we saw the game prior. Yeah, he's going to play 2TCs. He actually sent out the Prelate just to bless the villagers on the stone. He's going to send the Prelate away and just focus probably on the Lumberjacks. That initial boost to your Stone Miners is pretty much enough to get the boost you need so that you have the Stone by the time you're done gathering the wood for that second Town Center. Yeah, yeah, we'll just jump into the chapel with it and uh, so he'll get the food bills as well. But um, that's where he... Like, the good thing for Salami is he's going to have a ton of food for that long haul. Just now dropping that stable. So going to have that counter unit for these longbows that he is scouting now moving across the map. And if uh, B doesn't drop a good old barracks or doesn't mass up enough longbows, those horsemen could... Take down a couple of those longbows and then also deny the deer as well. More and more of them just being queued up, moving across the map. Sometimes you'll see it like three to four longbows into um into this kind of castle age behind or two TC behind, depending on what your goal is. And 3DB circling around the base of Salami. Spotted out the stone spotted out the base and actually pulls back the longbows because horsemen are moving across and needs to watch out for that and there's the quick build of the barracks yeah lovely deployment of the palings just to be sure just to make sure that those initial horsemen can't do any damage to the archers or longbows before the spearmen would arrive but of course for salami the main story as you mentioned is playing into that second tc he actually opts to put it to the north, where there is not a lot of food to work with. So one of the things that we'll have to keep monitoring for Salami is the amount of available food that he has to work with. He's got a lot of sheep, but that's basically the only source of food that's very well secured right now for him. 
Yeah, might end up trying to drop a few farms around Chapel, safe and secure under his town center. But this TC secures up his secondary gold. It kind of secures up his wood line too, but no pressure has come out yet. And we'll see what 3DB has in store here. He's just been getting the eco upgrades. Might just be planning this timing attack, building up this military mass to then move out when it's safe and secure. That's one thing when you, you kind of have to do with the English. The question's going to be is, you know, it's so hard to take down town centers of the HRE. So I think, as you were saying, it might just be a food focus for 3DB trying to just kind of chokehold Salami on the other side. Yeah, that's the most realistic avenue for him to do real damage. He might try to camp the gold mine to the north, but Salami's going to back up to the south. So denying the golds is somewhat unrealistic. Denying the wood, probably unrealistic. But denying food is very much a possibility for him. And if he plays into that, he could straight up deny a castle age from Salami even. Ooh, and gets spotted out by that TC. Takes a little bit of damage, no unit loss, and a villager circling around. Love this for 3DB. He knows the English. He wants that network of castles bonus wherever he is, as well as giving himself just long-term vision and denial of certain locations on the map because 2TCHRE very very defensive and very you know you have to just basically play on the on the back foot the whole game until you boom back out it's gonna be double range play here from salami to respond not a terrible idea oftentimes you see players facing longbows playing into archers especially if you have a strong economy because you're just trying to play for that potential to overwhelm and B, B could actually find himself trapped over here. He's actually dropping in power. He pulled some villagers, and Salami doesn't know this yet. And does drop the outpost. Is able to get a vil pick there. Snipe down one or two of the archers as well that just got thrown into this mass, trying to kill a spearman or two before they end up losing their life. There's two spearmen in that mass for 3DB, I think. And uh, he's going to struggle to regroup back up with it. Yeah, Town Center is going to deny the reinforcements here from B. And he's got some archers popping out in the favor of Salami as well. Tower is going to go up, and that should deny the gold. But there's a backup gold to the north for Salami. Also will deny the forest. But once again, Salami has some backups to the east. So for the time being, Salami is okay. But he's going to have to start respecting this forward here from B very soon. And B taking the boar, being the aggressor, moving out and getting this long-term food eco, like we were saying, he's on the deer, he's on the boar, just, but we'll need to make sure to protect up these vills as these five horsemen spot out these villagers on the boar, probably saw it disappear from the mini map. And uh, there's not any spears here to defend this location and a huge pickup here for Salami. Talk about huge. That could be the game over here. He's on two TCs, B is on one. Just massacres eight villagers over here. As good as it gets for Salami, he had the scout nearby. He was looking for these villagers. Possibly even saw the board disappearing from the minimap as it gets attacked. And once he saw that, he just jumped over there, picks off all the villagers. B is down by 15 in a blink of an eye. Yeah, pushed forward during this, though, has that backstop location with the outpost, but there is a good amount of military here for Salami, who pulls Vils, pulls the rest of his military, and is diving this outpost now. Longbow's trying to kite back and forth, might just try to take down as much as they can, and it looks like Salami not able to take down the outpost, as his rest of his horseman mass is not there yet. And great so kiting back from though. 3DB. Losing out the rest of that longbow mass. Outpost still getting burnt down. Only one vill inside it. So that should get cleaned up pretty well. And Salami probably really happy about the position he finds himself in. Hmm. Longbow's finally getting cleared on up. Uh oh. This is where it gets dicey for Salami. We talked about this. It's the food that's the weakness of his. And if you look at his food income at the top of the screen, you can see he's got no accessible food. 
this is why so many times you see the second town center being placed on food. Whether that's hunt, whether that's berries, that doesn't really matter that much. What matters is that you need to secure additional food because you will be depleting your food stockpiles really fast working on two TCs. And B knows that fully well. He's going to deny a lot of food that's available for Salami. Yeah, and, and what he did well too was deny the wood line first um, with the food as well. So what that did was prevented this farm transition, which we just now Salami doing. And this takes a bit of time as the villagers have to build the farms and then start gathering from the farms, which all this time be able to move out, take that next food resource of the boar. He's even walling it up this time to prevent any horseman raid like we saw the last. <laughs> Salami is making a transition to farms, but this is slowing him down really badly. And B, learning from the previous boar, he is just going to wall his villagers in here, make sure that he's not going to get raided. A lovely move from Salami, though, to make that wall to the south, making sure that these longbows cannot Ooh. loop around. And if it worked once, it works again. Dive right back in on this wood line. And there are so many villagers here. This might be a little bit of an even up. Salami, a little late to react there. Took a little bit of loss first. Spears not there to uh, protect the horsemen as the few archers snipe them down. But longbow mass is healthy enough to just clear up these horsemen before too many go down. Oh, and this man at arms is providing the vision over the wood line for 3DB to snipe down with the longbows. Great job by him right there. Oh, but the greed of the boar yet again. Uh, imagine if his salami had a little bit more food to work with. He's been struggling for food and that's why he cannot field horsemen to deal with these longbows trying to take down this tower on the east side to deny the boar. But as he said, oh. scout once again from B, providing the line of sight and the longbows just firing over the forest to pick off the villagers. Now, salami's villager count is no longer as good as it used to be compared to b he was up 15 wheels now it's only a mere 11. and this shows why you don't just rage quit and forfeit the game i can't tell you how many people would have lost those wheels on the board and immediately quit but 3db just showing you what aggression can be like this scout giving him the vision sees how hurt salami is on this wood line just continuing to send wheels out gold about to be denied with this too wheels just hanging out near the chapel and damage is coming and salami is in a desperate situation not only is the vill count getting closer and closer for 3db there's so many vills just not doing anything on the side of salami and yeah there it is salami just taps out of this one for a moment it seemed like he was gonna take this game with that cavalry raid but then he started running out of food and without food he simply had nothing to produce he wasn't able to afford the horsemen, he wasn't able to afford the men-at-arms, and he wasn't able to deal with those longbows beyond a certain point. Just absolutely wild. I think if you had gone to that nine-minute mark and put a prediction back up after the uh, Vil kills, I think everyone would have, 90% would have voted that Salami just finishes the game after that. But no, be able to hold, able to sustain, put the pressure down, and take the W there on game number two. Yeah, you look at this military graph that tells you the whole story. Massive numbers advantage, especially beyond that 13-minute mark. You can tell based on this graph when Salami ran out of food. And that was the difference maker. He was in a great position, cleaned up the villagers, but he never had food to continue with. And by the time he kind of got back on track with the food eco, it was too late. Army numbers snowball out of control, and B takes the game. Another exciting, a lot of action right off the bat. Did not end how we would have expected it to end in the midpoint, but ended how we would have might have predicted from the go. Should be jumping on into Hill and Dale as our last Salami home map.
and Salami spawning in on this southeastern side. The Delhi Sultanate is his favorite civilization, his known civilization. And 3DB on the opposite side on his hill in the northwest. Chinese and yet again the deer opening. He is three for three on the deer starts here. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He can just go and supervise the mill as well, which is an added benefit of the Chinese. So there is that for him as well. Salami will just play the good old fashioned berries as you would expect from the deli. Yep, getting those typical buildings, typical opening in, straggler tree drop off, able to get the mosque, those free techs started, needs that efficient production in as soon as possible uh, once you start pumping in the feudal age. And uh, Wheelbarrow, everyone's known favorite upgrade, is already on the way as well. Now let's look at the map over here real quickly because... Hillendale is one of the most optimized maps of AOA4. This is not the built-in Hillendale that we're using. It's a slightly more optimized version. And what you have here is a very balanced layout of the sacred sites, equally distributed across the map. Relics are pretty much fair, slightly favoring Salami, most likely. And of course, when it comes to the forests, each player is only going to have one large forest and one small forest on the top of their hill. For the rest of the wood, they will have to start moving down hills. Yeah, and that's one of the things. I haven't played this map in quite some time, but uh, one of the things I always remembered that if you're getting to the late game, the wood lines on this map always ended up being kind of the, the key vulnerable spot. And, you know, will it end up getting to the late game is the question. We all know China is the powerhouse if we talk about late game. For sure it is. And on the other side, Delhi is known for that intermediate part of the game. Mid-late Feudal Age, early Castle Age, maybe late Castle Age. With the changes that have happened to them, they might be somewhat competitive, even in Imperial, but definitely not against the civilization that's such a late game juggernaut as the Chinese are. Yep, exactly, exactly. And Feudal Age landmarks will be coming in in just a second. So we're going to see what Salami drops. There's the Tower of Victory choice, Imperial Academy. Easy option for 3DB doing that typical Song Dynasty opening. So with the Tower of Victory, it seems like Salami... Just thinking he needs to be a little bit more aggressive, usually maybe it needs the extra bit of uh, firepower behind it to deal with the uh, potential Chukanus on the other side. Indeed, Tower of Victory now coming in for him. We talked about this in the pregame. If you're B, you need to get scouting intel at the beginning of Feudal Age. You need to know what Salami is up to. And if you see the Tower of Victory, you cannot play greedy here. You're going to have to play into army, likely Chukonus with the Song Dynasty. Yeah, and, and probably not going to move out for that middle sacred site with his Barbican of the Sun. Probably will drop it a little bit more conservatively, maybe just protecting up his gold veins or maybe protecting up his uh, hunt and wood line there on the western side. Either option, I think, is a fine choice. We will see that in just a second. Feudal Age is really when this uh, map and civilization is going to start opening up and things are going to start getting scary for one of these players. You know, you look at B's build, he has enough resources to go to Song Dynasty straight away with the Barbican. This is the reason why he's only committing one villager to that landmark, the Imperial Academy, because that way he's going to have enough workers to be able to afford the second landmark and he's likely going to place the Barbican on his gold mine. Or if he's afraid about sacred sites, he might move out. In fact, he's moving out. He's moving towards the board, though. Is he? Yeah. I, that's uh, what I was nope. thinking. I was I was like, is it a Barbican? It's just kind of a middle-of-the-pack Barbican. I feel like this is one of the ones that, like, trying to double accomplish. He will be able to end up pulling the boar into it. Um, so I guess it's kind of... Somewhat killing two birds with one stones, but I, I think it also doesn't really fully deny the sacred site. No, it won't. Then again, if you're in B's position, you have to keep in mind that denying a sacred site altogether with a single Barbican is likely impossible. 
you will have multiple scholars there healing each other whatsoever. You likely want to deny it with your army. And for that, this Barbican placement is more than fine. That Barbican is just going to be your staging ground. Yep. And will allow him to get that extra food income and safe food income under the Barbican. Quite hard to dive. You can idle the vills, but you will lose military for it. Speaking of food income, tons of sheep under that mill as he started on the deer. So we'll be able to have the sheep as the backup spot. First horseman coming in for the raid too, though. And second already there as well. Yeah, Fortune down that village. In. Old Knight will be denied for the time being. Now, you take a look at B's base, and at least based on the minimap, it's difficult to see a backup gold mine to work with, which could be a bit of a trouble. Of course, you do have the tax income for the Chinese, so you can get yourself a little bit of gold if need be. First Barracks is just now coming out, and I love to see, by the way, let's talk about this, the horseman play from Salami. Tower of Victory was spotted by B, most likely, and we talked about how much the Chukonu could be the realistic response to a spear and archer push. Salami opts to go with the horseman, a unit that is not being buffed by the Tower of Victory, by the way. It's for this unit, the Tower of Victory is useless. But then again, he plays into the weaknesses of the anticipated comp that's supposed to come out from B as a response. And so far, it's working out. Yep, and then sees the spears, immediately pulls back ahead of time and drop it in archery range himself. And one thing I love about the Delhi is how fast you're able to immediately transition into other military. Not only is that going to be one archery range, it's going to be two with just one single scholar able to jump inside, if need be. And that's the big thing is, if need be. For now, Salami is going to pull back. Sanctity is on the way for him. He's just now finishing up with that. He's going to regroup a little. Whereas for B, he's going to play into the Spears. It makes me wonder what exactly Salami is planning. Because we have seen how sometimes Delhi players will just fall back a little here. Kind of bait the opponent into playing overly defensive and not focusing on the boom. And then possibly even going for a fast castle. We'll have to see if Salami is thinking along those lines. Right now he's not mining gold, so it's quite unlikely. It remains to be seen if he changes his mind. I feel like this is like the OG deli that's like, I want to I'm only going castle if I'm getting sacred site gold to go castle. If not, it's gonna be all military. And the archers can help secure him up those sacred sites as he starts to grab the eastern one, but that is exactly where 3DB is already headed with not only the scouts but additional units as well. Cancels up a village and yet again denied off the gold. So great job by 3DB or uh, by Salami here. So far, no sacred sites available for Salami. B opts to go with the horseman. And you mentioned the production capabilities and the flexibility that the Delhi have when it comes to just changing the pace of their production with the scholars' garrison. Basically, the same can be accomplished by the Chinese as they can just shift their Imperial officers from boosting the ranges to the stables. <laughs> and look at the cheeky play coming out for Salami, trying to wall in 3DB, but B spots it out, dives on in, has Chukanu in production, and has the horseman diving in on the archers. The question is, who will have the mass big enough? Does Chukanu do damage to just about everything, but horseman finally coming in to pull back up, reinforce this mass, and should clear up the rest of Salami's forces that are too far forward and front. Oh, disastrous fight out there for Salami, losing all the archers. Managed to get a couple of picks in return, but his army is now getting forced back. He's just now mixing in the spears, and now he's heavily outnumbered. It's a three to one army lead right now for B. And off the back of this, he's doing this from a Song Dynasty position, so he's also building up a healthy villager lead. Yeah, exactly. Up seven villagers already. Salami has only been able to secure one sacred site in the meantime, and that sacred site is about to be denied in just a second once 3DB has a couple military units arrive. Massing up near his Barbican, and uh, this is about to be the danger zone for Salami again. That Shuka new mass getting to the point where there's no longer a unit that counters it on that side. If you are the Delhi in this position and you have to defend, that's a very bad sign. 
You look at B, just for a brief moment, he's got a thousand food per minute, 600 wood per minute. He's going to flood you with Chukonu very soon. His army looking much healthier, ready to take a fight close to those berries. Yeah, and those Shukanu, they can shred those spears so fast as we already see one or two get taken down, horsemen get taken to low health, Barry's going to start being denied, and so Salami, you uh, talked about how good the food income was for 3DB, Salami going to start hurting, but first we got the Chukanu mass, horsemen trying to dive on top, and the horsemen for 3DB have circled the archers of Salami. Great micro back from the spears, but all this time the Chukanu are just shredding on the other side. But Salami holds. He does hold, and now the army numbers are looking better and better for Salami. Has a lot of spears here and no longer enough Chukonu for B to focus those down with. A lot of the horsemen going down to the spears here. Also notable that now Salami is getting those blacksmith upgrades in. So he's starting to gain a bit of a tech lead in these fights. Part of the reason why he's doing so well. Yeah, it's so crucial that you get ranged armor against Shukanu. He also had such great micro, actually, that whole time with his archers sniping out all those Shukanu. But Phil's go idle. They actually pull out their shivs to come help this mass. I don't know if that's the great idea um, with those Delhi villagers as those um, not quite the most combat efficient unit. Well, Salami is holding, but behind this, B is building up a villager lead. He's up by 10. Salami, still denied of all sacred sites. So this is a pristine eco lead that B is building up over here. Salami trying to cut into that, trying to secure the sacred site in the middle. His army might not be sufficient or large enough for that. Yeah, the bad part for Salami is all of his horsemen got cleared out. That was the unit he really needs to be that frontline tank to deal with Chukanu's somewhat okay and efficiently. But now horsemen are no longer, it's just archer reliant. And now if he just takes those fights head up, he loses these a lot harder than he did before. He's slowly squeezing in those upgrades himself, so things will start evening out. And look at this, forward production now coming in here. This is going to be a very difficult first position for Salami to push, and it will make it even more so challenging for him to contest any of those sacred sites, really. Yeah, and, and one thing I'm sure B is going to end up doing behind this is start to expand further out on the map, grab the next set of deer, grab the berries behind, start taking some of these resources. Even though it might be somewhat vulnerable, he's starting to take the map control and pushing out further. Starting to head up towards the base of Salami. You can see military numbers have tilted in the favor of 3DB and still has, you know, overall the, the resources on that army value as well. Yeah, needs to be cautious, though, not to get trapped in here inside the enemy base. He might have limited vision on what Salami has. If he underestimates Salami's power here, he could get cleaned up. And you see, Salami is going siege engineering here. So he's going to have the opportunity to push the middle with rams. And I think B is just now realizing that he's going to be walled inside here. Yeah, he's circling around the backside, trying to find some bills to kill, only finding those spears that were walling up. One of the uh, great efficient things about the Delhi Sultanate military mass and uh has nowhere to go is stuck back in this corner sees that there's no vills on the berries back in the corner so just again trying to deny salami of food as he knows that those front side berries got denied and the wall in happens and this is where salami trying to take the fight thinks he has enough here archers firing down on the back side and they are like machine guns with that tower of victory upgrade able to take the fight against the chukanus pretty efficiently but another mass diving the front side for 3db archers just shredding this backside mass 3db though even with losing all of this look at the military numbers on the top side he is still winning with losing this fight Oh, this is so, so tricky here for Salami. He had to clean this army up, but that was all a bait here by B. B is now pushing in himself, has a lot of Chukonu, but he just lost a huge army here. You look at the bottom left, Salami destroyed so much more value than B. If Salami can take one more fight like this here, this could get tricky for B very soon. 
Yeah, the problem is, is B, he's up 16 eco at this point. That Song Dynasty is starting to pay off. Chuka News, not too expensive. And uh, you can see how they're even efficient and killing some houses somewhat. B choosing to step forward in this fight, taking the fight. Not too many horsemen left here, but he is firing on some houses on the backside. So not getting all of the fire that he needs to. Good fight for Salami, but I don't think it's going to be good enough here. He's also pushed away from wood, so reinforcing this is impossible for him. Salami's got basically no units in queue, whereas for B, he keeps flooding units through the map, denying those crucial resources. The bear is on the front, the forest on the front, and he grinds down Salami's army, likely leading towards a 3-0 victory here for B and a spot in the quarterfinals. Yep, no more military units really able to pop out. Scholars being that front side tank unit, trying to find a spot to jump on in. But Shuka Numas just shredding everything and might just shred the TC after they deal with the rest of this military. Yeah, Salami just down to six army at this point. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. He is going to tap out at B, moves on to the last round of the qualifiers. One set away he is from qualifying to the elite classic yeah and that is our first person getting himself the spot in that corner finals the spot in the option to make it to the final 16. you look back at this game and you see how well b denied those initial sacred sites that's where it all started it was so difficult for Salami to cut into that quote-unquote eco lead that B had that just comes passively from the Song Dynasty. If he had those sacred sites just a little longer, a few minutes, it probably would have been enough to build overwhelming numbers and start gaining ground, secure more sacred sites. But that never really materialized. And by the time he got to decent archer numbers, B simply just had more. Yeah, just a textbook game there from 3DB showing you how to play against the Delhi. It was, you know, splitting apart his military, not allowing those sacred sites, just how you said, and then just snowballed from there. So brilliant, brilliant series and just showed how quick and efficient 3DB can be.